الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Today tonight we'll talk about the book of manners page 443.12 the prohibition of calling people by nicknames that they dislike, which is called the Tanabuz Bil Alqab. Tanabuz Bil Alqab. Allah says, Subhanahu wa Taala, in Surah Al Hujurat, "Wala Tanabuz Bil Alqab bi Salismu Al Fusuq Baghd Al Iman." Allah says, "Wala Tanabuz Bil Alqab," nor insult one another by nicknames. طيب, uh, there is. Uh, Narration Rawa Abu Jubayra ibn al-Dahak Abu Jubayra ibn al-Dahak The next page 444 Radhi Allah Ta'ala said When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam first came to us It means in Medina Every man among us had a, at least two or three names The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began to say Also and so Calling him by one of his names Which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was informed of by others they said refrain from calling him by the name or oh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam for the he becomes angry when he is called by that name then this verse was revealed wala tanabazu bil alqab so they used to have more than one name okay and they they don't like these names so when people call them by using these names, they become angry. The Prophet ﷺ doesn't know that he doesn't like this name. But when he came to Medina, he noticed that he, this man has two or three names. So he's choosing one of them. So the, they told the Prophet ﷺ, or Rasulullah, don't call them. Don't call him by this name. Because he doesn't like this name. Allah revealed the ayah. Okay, so when we call people, we should call pe- people with their names, the real names. Okay, and we should choose the things that they like. Yani, uh, if you remember, yani, I think we mentioned this point, uh, the, the person has a name. Yeah, for example, my name is Ahmed. I, my, my family name is Ar-Rumh. My son is Abdurrahman. So people call me Abu Abdurrahman. So maybe some people uh, call me Abu Abdurrahman. Other people call me Ahmed. Other call me Ar-Rumh uh, because my, my, my family name is Ar-Rumh. So you should, uh, not you should, yeah, it is not wajib, but of course, when you, yeah, if you know the name that I like more, you call me with this name. And the same thing for you. Okay, maybe uh, one of the sisters, Aisha, and also she is Um Abdullah. Uh, and also maybe she has another another name. But if she likes, for example, Um Abdullah, so we call her Um Abdullah. So we call the person with the name that he likes. With the name that he likes, and we should avoid the, that the name he doesn't like. And subhanAllah, usually this is among the children, okay, or the teenagers, when they are in the school between the age of uh, 12 and uh, 17. So this is from the Jahiliyyah. This is from the Jahiliyyah. طيب. Next point, number 13. It is recommended to make peace between brothers. There is a great hadith. The Prophet وسلم, asked the companions, رضي الله تعالى عنهم, ألا أخبركم بأفضل من درجة الصيام والصلاة والصدقة? Shall I not inform you of what is better than... Uh, in degree than fasting, prayer, and charity? Companion said, yes. <laughs> of course, we like to know. The Prophet وسلم, said, Salah al bain. Reconciling differences between people. This is a great job, a great deed. To solve the problem between the people. I, if I know that two of my friends are not talking 
are they, are, they don't give salam to each other. I should work hard to solve this problem. Maybe between my brother and my sister, my brother and my father, my sister and my mother, like that. I should work hard to solve that problem. And this is considered as one of the great deeds, one of, one of the uh, great deeds. Then the Prophet said, فَإِنَّ فَسَادَ ذَاتِ الْبَيْنِ هِيَ الْحَالِقَةِ For corruption in the relationships of people is al-haliqah. Haliqah means shaver. Shaver. It shaves. Not the hair, but it shaves the religion. Subhanallah. Yani, if the person has a, a problem with his brother, then you'll find him starts to backbite. I have a problem with my uh, with a friend or with a brother or with a sister. Then I start to backbite. I start to get the news, spy. Uh, I will try to create the troubles for him. I will um, think about him. I will uh, yeah, I do anything bad for him. Subhanallah. So also it, I'm wasting my time. I will not read Quran, I will not attend lecture, I will not read a good book. I will pay attention just to create any trouble for him. And it will be worse if people use the uh, يعني, magic. Some of them use magic. And this is definitely haram. And this is a major sin. So one of the important points, brothers and sisters, that if I know there is a problem, between this brother and that brother, I should try my best to solve it. Okay, because many people say, uh, please, we have enough troubles, we have enough problems. Why should I interfere between him and the khalas? Let them solve their problem. If they don't solve their problem, it's their issue. I have enough issues, I have enough headache. No, we should, I'm not saying we should take the headache, but we should do something for them. Maybe others will think also about us. If I am working hard to solve the problems among the people, also people will do good for me if I have problem with my uh, brothers and sisters. And also here there is an important point he mentioned. Because of the importance of this issue, lying is allowed. To lie is allowed. The Prophet said, the next page, uh, 446, ليس الكذاب الذي يصلح بين الناس فينمي خيرا أو يقول خيرا He is not a liar who makes peace between people so that he increases goodness or speaks goodness. طيب, so this is, very, this is very important that the Sharia gives you the opportunity to lie if you can solve the problem between two Two persons. Tayyib. And uh, also this is considered as a charity if you solve the problem between uh, your brothers or friends. Tayyib. Next point. Tahreem al-man. Tahreem al-man. Page 446. No, point number 14. The prohibition of al-man. What's the meaning of man? He said, reminding others of one's generosity. I give you something, okay? For example, you need this flash for filming, for Instagram, whatever. So I give you, yalla, take this. This inshallah can help you for your lectures. Then, anytime I, I, I meet you, I remind you that, huh? how was your uh, filming now with my flash? Yes, you remember I gave you this flash and the small stand and also the microphone. After one month, okay, also with the friends, I remind him. So this is called men, to remind someone about your generosity. Subhanallah. And uh, this is this is a major sin. This is a major sin, haram. Allah says in the Quran, الذين يفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله ثم لا يتبعون ما أنفقوا منا ولا أذى. 
page 447. Or sorry, before that, he mentioned a good, uh, nice point. And uh, if you notice in the third line, page 446. And they do so either because they are miserly or because they are self uh, conceited. Uh, conceited. <laughs> Those people who remind the others about the, their favors, they are either uh, stingy, miser, or mu'jab. What does it mean mu'jab? Yani he, he, yani he wants to put him, yani, like, it is a kind of proud. He's proud of his deeds. Or he's arrogant. Something like that. So why he wants to remind you about the favors that he gave? Okay, because he's very stingy. Or he's proud. Taib. And both of them wrong, subhanAllah. He, he mentioned the ayah about the believers. Okay, the good way to give charity. Those who spend their wealth in the cause of Allah and don't follow up their gifts with reminders of their generosity or with injury. This is the correct way of Charity. The Prophet said this the next hadith Wallahi scary hadith. Thalatha la you can limum la yum al kiyama. Wala yum do relayhim. Wala yu zakihim wala hum adabu alim. As for three people, Allah will not speak to them on the day of resurrection, nor will he look at them. Nor he will purify them, and for them is a painful punishment. Four things. Okay? So, of course, now the Prophet is going to tell you something serious. Something, yani, something major. Major sin. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sorry, Abu Dar. The, uh, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi repeat that three times. After which Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala said, They have failed and truly lost. Who are they, O oh Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al Musbil wal Mannan wal Munafiq sil'atahu bil Halif al Kadib wal Munafiq. Okay, in this way we should recite it, read it. Wal Munafiq, not wal Munfiq. وَالْمُنَفِّقْ سِلْعَتَهُ بِالْحَلِفِ الْكَادِبِ Okay, number one. المسبل, a person who allows his garment to hang below the level of his ankles. Number two. المنان, a person who reminds others of his favors and of his generosity. Number three. And a person who promotes his piece of merchandise with a false oath. So, Al-Musbil, uh, Al-Musbil here, the one who, his, his garment below the ankles, from the other hadith, the scholar said, it is not, not every Musbil, the Musbil, who is doing that with arrogance, out of arrogance. He's making his sleeves, his, his garments below the ankle with arrogance. Tayyib, well mannan also this is very bad. Every time I give, I remind the people. I remind the one who, who was given. And this is haram. And um, not necessarily that you give. Maybe, yeah, and for example, maybe I teach you something. And yeah, maybe the, the, there is something in the mobile. Okay, then I tell you something in the mobile. Okay, there is a new option. There is something uh, most people don't know. So now I'm telling you, then you are happy with that option. Okay, so every time I remind you, ah, you are using this option, you are doing that, you are using this application, طيب, Habibi, خلاص, don't remind me. If you are a person who is reminding people, don't tell them. Don't tell them because, subhanAllah, al-man is one of the major sins and this is very bad. This is very bad, uh, يعني, moral. 
And the third one, one munafiq sal'atuhu bil hal fil kadib. A person who has a shop and he's selling his items. And always uh, he is giving oath and lying by his oath. Yani, uh, you come to my shop. You say, how much, how much for this stand? This is uh, 10 kd. Wallahi. Okay. If you buy it, you like it. This is, the, oh, okay. Uh, you do not say anything. And I started to say, Wallahi. And I start lie. Wallahi, this is the best one in the market. Okay. You can use it for 10 years. It will not break. You can fix the mobile. You can fix the, the flash. Wallahi. Now, this is the last piece. Tayyip. Why I am lying and swearing? Because I want to market for my items. Okay? This is haram. This is haram. Of course, people will be very happy. Why? Because usually people listen, believe you. If you are saying, Wallahi, Wallahi, people will believe you. Not all of them, but many of them. And they will buy from you. You will be happy. Or I will be happy because I finished my... The, the, yani my, my uh, items from the shop and I got the cash money. But well, this is a major sin. He will be punished at the day of judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not forgive him his, his sins. طيب. Next uh, point, حفظ السر. Point number 15. حفظ السر. Keeping a secret and not spreading it. The Prophet sallallahu said, Ayatul Munafiq Thalath, Ida haddatha kadab, wa ida wa'ada akhlaf, wa ida tumina khan. Okay? Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm trying to mention the ayah and hadith in Arabic. Yani one of the brothers told me, yani it is good to mention the Arabic and English. Or, or the Arabic, yani before the English. Also, inshallah, yani this will help you to learn Arabic. The Prophet sallallahu said, Ayatul Munafiq, ثلاث إذا حدث كذب وإذا وعد أخلف وإذا تؤمن خان The signs of the hypocrite are three When he speaks he lies When he promises he breaks his promise And when he is trusted he betrays You tell him something a secret Don't tell anyone But immediately he will send to his friends Or he will put in the media This is haram And this is a sign of the Hypocrites. والعياذ بالله. طيب. Sometimes. يعني I tell you something. But I do not. I do not tell you that it is a secret. But there is something. Can you can understand that it is a secret. Like this hadith. إذا حدث الرجل الحديث ثم التفت فهي أمانة. When a man says something. And then turns around to make sure that no one is listening. Then it will uh, it is a trust. Yeah, for example, uh, I, Brother Ahmed, I'm going to tell you something. Before telling you, I am checking yani, that there is nobody. Okay, I did not tell you this is secret. But I am checking the surroundings. Why? Because it is a secret. So you should understand that this is a secret. طيب. He mentioned a hadith يعني, uh, that Anas ibn Malik, the, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sent Anas ibn Malik to do something. رضي الله تعالى عن. Then uh, the mother of Anas ibn Malik رضي الله تعالى عنهم said, why, why you are late today? And I said, because the Rasulullah sent me to do something. Then the mother of Anas said, what was that? And I said, uh, sorry mom, it is a secret. It is a private job for the Prophet ﷺ. Private mission. Then the mother of Anas said, رضي الله تعالى عنهم, don't tell the secret of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to anyone. Ya subhanallah. Yani, of course, yani, everyone likes to know what was the this, this secret. But yani, 
she was a good mother radiyallahu ta'ala umm sulaim what was the mother of um, uh, the mother of anas umm sulaim umm sulaim radiyallahu ta'ala it was a good mother she did not say please anas tell me i will give you some chocolate i will give you uh, something tell me يعني, subhanallah sometimes some of the mothers uh, they try to spoil their children okay يعني, for example maybe the, the father the, the teacher the other brother told your son or daughter a, a, a secret so don't spoil your son okay now your son is trying to keep this this secret okay and you, uh, as a mother you tell him uh, no no you should tell me I am your mother Okay, don't tell anyone else, but you should tell the mother. So, subhanAllah, now you are spoiling and corrupting the, 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 the concept of your children, with your children. The concept should be secret is secret, even with the mother. But subhanAllah, the mother of Anas was a good mother, and she, she said to him, don't tell anyone the secret of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Next point, 16. Dul... Dulwajhain, the evilness of being a person of two faces. طيب. He started with Hadith Bukhani Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Tajidu min shar al-nas yom al-qiyamah, عند الله دلوجهين الذي يأتي هؤلاء بوجه وهؤلاء بوجه." Subhanallah, this is the worst person. Okay, because what is the meaning of that two faces? It means hypocrisy. Munafiq, a hypocrite. It means a nifaq. two faces. Al Nawawi, rahimullah ta'ala, said in uh, page 450-450, in the second line, Al Nawawi said, a two faced person is one. Is one who goes to each group with what pleases it, giving the appearance that he is from from it and opposed to its contempt, uh, counterpart or enemy. His action is pure hypocrisy, lying, deception, and tricky. But if a person goes to two groups in order to make peace between them, then he is doing something that is praiseworthy. Okay, as we, we mentioned before, it is allowed to lie if you want to solve the problem between two groups or two people. Also, he, he clarified more. No, Rahmullah. On the other hand, uh, others have said the difference is that a two faced person praises the group he is with and finds fault with the other group. And he does the same when he is in a, the company of the, group, the other group. On the other hand, the praiseworthy person goes to each of the two groups with words of reconciliation, finding excuses for one group while he is with the other, trying to convey good points of the other group while hiding, hiding their faults. Okay? Can I have a break for half a minute, but just to switch to the AC? I feel hot. Do you feel it's hot? We'll come back. Okay, just to share something good, inshallah. Uh, there is one uh, doctor, he, he was teaching in the uh, Faculty of Medicine in, uh, in Egypt. So he has nice videos. Uh, so he said, Seven, se seven things can help uh, you to, to improve your immunity or seven types of food are good for your, the immunity. And he said this, these types of food from the kitchen. Okay, so maybe uh, 
it's good nowadays because many people think, should I take vitamin C, should I take kinesia, okay? So I mentioned something simple from the kitchen. Uh, maybe you like to write with, with me. Inshallah, you can memorize. And inshallah, I will try to recall them. Number one, he, he mentioned the garlic. Thum. And he said, don't cook it if you want the benefit for garlic. And you should uh, grind it by your fingers and eat it. So don't swallow it. Okay? And don't cook it if you like the, the benefit. Garlic, onion, um, green tea, the seeds of uh, pumpkin, gourd, yaqteen, the seeds of the pumpkin, dark chocolate, طيب. what else? Okay, maybe in f five are enough. طيب. Just, this is a break for you. Yes, ginger. <laughs> yes, Zachal Khair, uh, Sister uh, Ruth. Yes, he said ginger, six. Number seven, inshallah, if I remember. Just, this is short break. Okay, so the last point was that how can I differentiate between the one who's trying to solve the problem and the one who has two faces? Okay, the one who has two faces, I, 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 we mean the hypocrite, he is trying to please everyone. When I go to this group and I tell them, well, you are the best and the other group very bad. Okay, and that when I go to the other group, I say, they are very bad and they are saying bad thing about you and you are the best. Uh, so this is the two-faced But the one we, we mentioned previously The one who is getting reward One of the great deeds يعني, More than uh, Siyam, Sadaqa, Wassala The one who is trying to solve the problem For example, I go to this group I say, Wallah, you are good people And also the other group are good people And they are mentioning you uh, يعني, in a good way and also when I go to the other group, I say the other group also, they are nice group. Maybe they misunderstood you like this. So I'm lying, but to, to make, to solve the problem, not to create the problem more. So this was about this chapter. Yeah. Start the new chapter, inshallah. Ready for the new chapter? Chapter 21. Or not ready? Are you ready for the... Uh, this is interesting uh, chapter. Uh, the manners of interacting with one's wife. Okay. So this chapter only for married people. Okay. Or also those who are going to marry. Shall we start this new chapter or enough? What do you think? Hello? Are you here or not? I want to make sure that people are, are listening to the lecture. Okay. Mubin, Muhammad Ibrahim, Sra, Fahad, Fatma. Tamam. Okay, Alhamdulillah, I'm Jamal. Okay. This is a very important chapter, especially nowadays, because we are at home. Huh? Because we are at home, so more contact. I will not say more, more problems. <laughs> Inshallah. Tayyip. Let's start. Allah, he started with the ayah. Here the Sheikh. Started with this ayah. وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلِلْرِّجَالِ عَلَيْهِنَّ دَرَجَةِ He started with the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah. And they, women, have rights over their husbands as regards living expenses, etc. 
similar to those of their husbands over them as regards obedience and respect to what is reasonable. طيب. Of course, uh, brothers and sisters, as I mentioned many times before, Islam talks about everything. Not only about the Salah and the Masjid, not only about fasting Ramadan, the Zakah. Also, Islam talks about business transaction, husband-wife relationship, parents-children relationship. This is very important. Why? If the family is under control, then the whole society will be under control. If I live in peace with my spouse and with my children, then I can be a protective person in the society. But imagine if I am suffering with my son, with my daughter, with my wife, with my husband. I'm fighting with them. There is a problem, troubles. I go to work full of headache. I cannot pay attention. I cannot concentrate. I'll be sad, depressed, anxious, worry. Subhanallah. Why? Because I am not happy inside. If the inner, if inside the house is strong, then the whole body will be strong, the whole society. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us the hadith that in the body there is a piece of flesh. If it is sound, the whole body will be okay. So the same thing. What is inside the, yeah, for example, in Kuwait. Kuwait consists of what? Several families. If, this, if, if the family is okay, then the country can improve. But imagine if every single house is suffering, the country cannot improve. Subhanallah. The hadith, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he did not divorce his wives, Alayhi Salatu but he isolated himself from his wives for one full month. 29 days. طيب. For 29 days, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in the masjid alone. He was not with his wives. He was upset with his wives. طيب. So, what was the situation? The Muslims were crying. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, was angry on his daughter. Hafsa radiallahu ta'ala anha. It was, yani, Umar ibn Khattab and the companions considered that, that, that this problem inside the house of Rasulullah sallallahu is something bigger than the enemy. Yani, uh, the, the neighbor of Umar ibn Khattab was in Medina, was in the masjid. And Umar Khattab ta'ala, was busy with his farm. So when the neighbor of Umar Khattab came, came back, and he told Umar Khattab, there is something happened. There is something serious. So Umar Khattab said, Aja'a Ghassan? Aja'a Ghassan? Umar Khattab, yani, when this man said, to Umar radiallahu anh, that there is a big problem happened. Umar radiallahu ta'ala expected that the enemy invaded us. The room invaded us. This man the, from the Ansar radiallahu anh, said, no, something more serious. Subhanallah. Yani they considered that the house of Rasulullah sallallahu is more important than everything, all the world. Subhanallah. So, Back uh, to the book, that the, the family, I mean to keep the peace, happiness in the family is very important to control the family. Uh, brothers, sisters, 
we should understand, we should realize the fact that we are human beings. We should know what is wajib and what is not wajib. We should study carefully the life of Rasulullah with his wives, not only one wife. We should study the answers of Rasulullah to the people. If you remember, I mentioned before, I think two or three days, when the Prophet was asked about a, a, a lady came and she asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam O Rasulullah Inna zawji rajulun misseek My husband is very stingy The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, She said she was complaining O oh, Rasulullah is not giving us uh, the enough Even the minimum He's not giving us the minimum The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not say Bring your husband We'll beat him What is the name of your husband? Yell, I will send the Umar Khattab to bring him to beat. Simply, the Prophet ﷺ said, خُذِي مَا يَكْفِيكِ وَوَلَدَكِ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Take for you and your children what is enough in a reasonable way. And the women left. Okay, so here there is an important point that the Prophet ﷺ knows that the men are not the same. Not all the men are good toward their wives in the financial point. And also the same thing, the women. Uh, they are not the same. They are not the same. But we should know that what are the things that we can live with and what are the things that we should avoid. Yani, a man came complaining <laughs> the Prophet ﷺ about his wife. The Prophet ﷺ said, Talaqa, divorce your wife. He mentioned something. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, divorce your wife. Then the man said, oh, Salah, but I love my wife. The Prophet ﷺ said, Khalas, keep your wife with you. At the beginning, you consulted me. I gave you the answer. You insisted because you love your wife. Keep your, your wife with you. But my recommendation is to divorce because there is something. Uh, again, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, it is very important to understand. This is very important. It is very important to read carefully the life of Rasulullah Wasallam because his life is our reference. Not the life of your brother or your sister. The standard is the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. طيب. So the ayah here, وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ طيب. Generally speaking, we understand from this ayah that I have rights and also my wife has rights. It is not only one side. Okay, please, brothers, you should understand. And also, sisters, you should also understand. It is not only the rights of the husband, it is not only the rights of the wife. Both of you have rights. And you should know. Of course, here the ayah doesn't mean that the same rights, but it means similarly, also your spouse. Your wife has wives, uh, has rights also. Okay? Again, the ayah doesn't mean the ayah doesn't mean that the rights of the women are equal to the rights of the man. No. But the ayah means that the man has rights and also his wife has rights. And everyone should should give his, the rights to his uh, spouse. That's it. Because some people think or they act as if the rights only from, for me. Me, I am, I am the husband, I have rights and you should do my rights. Or some women, they believe no, I have rights and you should do your, my rights toward me. They don't think about the duties. No, the life 
has rights and duties. What? طيب. I will stop here, inshallah. I will try to move, uh, finish this chapter, inshallah, next week before Ramadan. Inshallah, I will try to finish before Ramadan. Maybe we can do two halqa before Ramadan. Because, yeah, inshallah, I like to finish this book before Ramadan. طيب. We have two chapters. Chapters of this, the wife and the rights of the wife and chapter of dua. طيب. We start the questions. Sheikh, why did the, the Rasul so I said, I was himself for 29 days. Please tell us. This is a long story. But his wife did something, and the Prophet I said, I was left himself for 29 days. Did you mean you should not convince people to? to buy our products and we should not tell them its benefit even if the product is good. No, I do not mean this. The hadith means the one who is swearing, uh, he's saying the oath, he's giving the oath and lying. The Prophet said, المنفق سلعته بالحلف الكاذب Wallahi, this is the best in the market. Wallahi, wallahi, it is not the best. Wallahi, this is the last, the last part. And he's not, he's not telling the truth, lying. No, it's okay, of course, if I'm selling something, okay, I have something, I can, I can mention what is right. Okay, yani, for example, if, if it is the last piece, okay, I can't say, wallahi, this, uh, without, without saying wallahi. Yani, we should avoid saying wallahi when, when you are in the business. Okay, so I can say, this is the last piece that I have. Okay, خلص, that's it. If they like to buy, okay. If they don't like, خلاص. طيب. So you can mention, you can mention the good points in your uh, products. Sheikh, it is very common that people behave different at different places, such as in front of bosses, in front of in-laws, etc. Does this come under the ruling of two-faced person? Hadith, hadith uh, when the scholars explain the hadith, two-faced persons, uh, person, it means I have a good pious friend. So when I stay with them, I speak about uh, the salah, the da'wah, the fasting, the lectures, tafsir, and I mention, wallahi, what is this? Music is haram, why everyone is using the, listening to the music, riba is haram, okay? And when I go to the other group, I say, Allah, these people are fundamentalists and they are doing everything haram, saying everything haram. This is, this is, this is wrong. And this is haram. But for example, when I am with my friends, okay, uh, so I chat with them, I laugh with them, I do jokes. But when I, when I am with my boss, of course, I, yani I, my dress will be different and my style will be different. This is okay. Why I'm dealing with, uh, yani with people? According to their levels or their relationship with my family, different with my friends. Okay. Very concerned. How to balance between the wife and the mother? It becomes almost impossible in many situations. Yani, please, brothers and sisters. Sometimes it is our mistake. I mean, as a man, I am doing the problem between my wife and my mother. Sometimes, this is one thing. Another thing, sometimes, yani, you cannot solve the problem. Sometimes you cannot solve the problem. Okay, because some problems can be solved by divorce. They or yani, you cannot please both of them. It is only one. But no doubt, in many cases, maybe most of the cases, you can make both of them, or also you, you, your wife, your mother, all of you can be happy if you are wise, inshallah. And of course, after the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should act uh, in a wise way. Consult the experienced people, because many times people don't consult. 
they try to solve the problem without experience. So they fail in solving the problem. So يعني, how to balance? It depends what is the problem. It depends what is the problem. Because sometimes the problem, as I said, the problem from us. يعني, for example, uh, after marriage, I live with my family, the same home. I mean, the, the house of my wa- mother. Okay, and if every day uh, I take lunch and dinner with my wife and my mother alone at home. And every three or four months I travel to one country and I do Umrah Hajj. And until now, my mother did not do Umrah or Hajj. Of course, this will create a problem because I'm not balancing. I'm do- giving everything to my wife, not my mother. Okay, so it depends what kind of problem. Sheikh. Today I had to go to work. I didn't have prayer carpet. So I went to Musalla in the building to pray. They were conducting Kamar, Kamar prayer. Should I join them and pray or pray alone? Kamar, I don't know what is Kamar. And for, for example, Wallahi, uh, if there are, for example, two people are praying, Okay, three people, you, you join them. You join them. But if you notice that they are creating a big gathering, and for example, 20, 30 employees, okay, we should respect the regulations in Kuwait. And this is for our safety. So maybe two, three people can pray alone. Because the ah, jama'ah prayer. So the rule is not more than five people. Okay, uh, yani, we should respect this, and this is for our safety. Subhanallah, what worked? for me was to become subhanallah what worked for me was to become her friend Finish with the sisters. خلاص. ده ما كم يوم تاريخنا؟ مش ترى اليوم أربعة عشر. Today is fourteen. سكيتة. ها؟ انتظر شو؟ Okay, 14. Zakal khair, Fahad. Zakal khair, brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you, bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all the Muslims and uh, yeah, to grant us Jannah al firdaus And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this Ramadan a blessed Ramadan for us, fasting, qiyam, layl, uh, dua during this Ramadan, accept from us. And from uh, from you, and to have mercy on the brothers and sisters who passed away because of Corona or any disease. Allah yarhamhum jamiyan. Wa see inshallah. Tomorrow I'm not sure if I have halqa because tomorrow I have a duty. Okay, I'm not sure. Inshallah, I will confirm later. Bismillah. Zakum Allah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.